Hi everyone, I'm Imogen from Course Report. We are a resource for researching which coding bootcamp is right for you. We have a directory of different coding schools, tons of reviews, a blog, and interviews with founders, instructors, students, all to help you work out which bootcamp you want to go to. Today, I'm excited to be speaking with Karam Varani, who is the co-founder and head of education at Lighthouse Labs, a Canadian bootcamp with campuses in Vancouver, Toronto, Montreal, Calgary, Victoria, and Halifax. We are going to be chatting about the computer science unit, which Lighthouse has recently added to the curriculum. So Karam, thank you so much for joining us today. Absolutely, it's great to be here. Um, maybe you can start by telling us what prompted Lighthouse Labs to actually add computer science fundamentals to your web development program. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I guess uh, at Lighthouse Labs, uh, we look at two major things uh, when it comes to how uh, we are doing what we're doing, uh, and just the health of the bootcamp in general. And those two things are data and community. Um, and while it's true that we're continuing to see um, great success with our bootcamp grads, um, having you know finding jobs thereafter, and great feedback from uh, their instructors uh, and their employers on how they're doing, um, when we talk to our employers and our students, uh, grads, and our teachers, mentors, our instructors, um, you know, the one common thing that we do hear about what could be improved in the program, you know, we get a lot of different data on that. Um, we call ourselves data-driven and community-driven education. Uh, and one of the common things we hear back is that it would be nice to have some time spent uh, focused on computer science topics. Um, and so we started an investigation into that, and that's really what led us, so the community and the data, you know, the interviews with people as well as the feedback that we got from actual exit surveys and things of that nature is what led us to that. And I think, you know, I think that really speaks to how we and boot camps in general, I think, are, which is, you know, we're nothing if we're not evolving through feedback. Um, and I was also wondering if, um, if it's at all been like um, to do with actual jobs you're seeing advertised, like uh, is there a requirement for um, for people going into developer jobs to have this CS knowledge? Um, when it comes to job descriptions and what our career services department that quarterbacks our alumni into internships and jobs beyond, um, you know, there isn't necessarily a roadblock that, hey, your students don't have computer science, we're not gonna hire them. I think boot camps and, and we in general have done a great job in kind of setting expectations of employers of what really boot camp is about and what it's not about. Uh, but at the same time, uh, there are uh, occasions where there's technical interviews uh, held by, you know, maybe a startup CEO or somebody, uh, a senior developer at a more established company that involves some computer science questions that then limit um, bootcamp grads from being able to pass those technical interviews. So we definitely had a few goals in mind when we created our content, and that was one of the things we looked at is the evaluation process of a company, despite knowing that those are some limitations of bootcamp students. So we definitely took that into consideration. So that's a fair point. Awesome. And then, yeah, tell me about how long this new CS unit is and what the, what the curriculum actually covers. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we're changing the length of our program for eight weeks to 10 weeks. Um, when it comes to the computer science content, uh, that takes up one week of that extension. Mm -hmm. So we decided to add a single study week, actually, in the middle of the program, uh, right after they finish their first uh, big group project uh, in the middle of the program. Um, so this would end up being the week five of the new length of the program. And it allows them to take essentially a short break after they've done a pretty intensive kind of sprint on uh, a project that they end up you know even demonstrating to uh, other students and their colleagues uh, so they end up getting some uh, additional um, stress added onto them right before they enter essentially what is a uh, a break week but in the sense that it is a study week focused on computer science that uh, in a way is easing off the the gas a little bit on the boot camp velocity so that they can also get a little bit of rest uh, instead of doing a 60-hour week, they're expected to do a 30-hour week that week. So it's a good rest and computer science week altogether. Um, so the topics that we cover, since you asked, um, are focused very much on applicable computer science things. And, and I'll get more into how we kind of selected them, but the topics themselves are um, software design principles, uh, an introduction to those, uh, an introduction to more advanced like trees, which are you know very realistic and applicable to both iOS and web, 
Uh, algorithms and algorithm complexity, This is these are things that come up in technical interviews a lot, but are also important to be able to evaluate the performance of code. Um, and then we get into more things as well, like unit testing, which is you know partly in computer science, but also part, again, in the applicable side of computer science and, and skills that and topics that we felt we weren't covering enough. Very cool. Um, and yeah, so, so CS majors normally study for four years at college, and I'm interested in how you decided what on those particular topics that you're including at Lighthouse Labs. Um, because it's only one week, how, do, how did you kind of decide that those are the most important ones? Yeah, I think that's a really good right. So the goal uh, in how we kind of picked, cherry-picked certain topics to fit within 30 hours of our uh, length is to essentially give them things that they can speak to, uh, but then also apply on the job. So what I mean by that is three major goals. One is that they can perform better in real web and mobile software development. So computer science concepts that actually translate well on the job. Um, second, uh, better, set, better meet expectations when they're on the job uh, from their colleagues that may have a computer science degree. You know, just in conversation with other developers when they're at a meetup, they should have certain computer science knowledge that we're just expected to know as, as developers. Um, and third is to help them perform better in tech interviews that happen to be computer science focused more than they ought to be, at least for bootcamp grad. So that at least whatever we're coming in CompSci, if it's just helping them better with the technical interview, that's not good enough. It has to actually be act good at the technical interview, the expectation, as well as what's reasonably applicable on the job um, to what they're doing. So we looked at that as a Venn diagram. And anything that intersected on all three things was you know, what we considered. And then, of course, we had to shorten the list further from there. Cool. And then I was wondering if you could give me an example of a CS topic that you actually decided not to include and, and why. Yeah, that's, that's also good. I mean, um, I can give you two examples. Uh, okay. One that's of something that would be a, potentially a bad thing to include or not as valuable, let's say, uh, which is something that falls within data structures. You know, we're teaching trees for data structures as an introductory concept to data complex data structures. Um, but we decided to exclude another data structure in the interest of time, but also that it would help more on the interview, but not necessarily on the job. And that data structure is called linked lists. It's talked about quite a bit in computer science degrees. I learned about it in my computer science degree. But uh, its application is a lot more rare. Um, it does fall within the category of, well, like as comp sci grads, people are expected to know what that means and what it is. And so there's that. But in terms of the applicability of it, it's a little bit more obscure. And so that was the reason we left it out. Um, another example is something that's, you know, does satisfy that Venn diagram that I described uh, previously, that it satisfies all our goals, but it was just too advanced and not something that we had the time to cover, which is things like graph theory. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's a huge topic there in terms of what graphs are as data structures and where they're applied, uh, how they're traversed. Um, and that's a really interesting topic that people have done PhDs and is, is the underlying technology for even many different types of databases, especially things like social networks. Um, and yet, you know, we decided to leave it out. Uh, but with the understanding that this is something that they may encounter in their future, right? So there's, you know, these 30 hours are not the end all be all. Uh, when it comes to that. And one of the things we're considering and, and doing is producing more content than we need for those 30 hours, and then putting the excess aside for what we essentially are calling an exit package uh, that will help students um, after they graduate in terms of what else they could uh, pursue. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good idea to have that extra content. I like that idea. I'm, I'm glad to hear. Um, and yeah, you were mentioning that you decided to create brand new content rather than kind of using existing CS resources in order to teach the, this part of the curriculum. And I was wondering if you could explain that decision. Yeah, so that was not a decision that we actually made uh, early on right off the bat. Uh, we were expecting in, in our initial ideation that we would be able to leverage a lot of existing online content, free courses, videos, perhaps books. And we still spent a considerable amount of time vetting existing content for all the topics that we're planning on covering. Um, you know, we did use some existing content, but I would say about 80% of the content, both in the teaching and in the evaluation of what we're teaching, is actually homegrown. Uh, and it's, you know, a lot more than we expected to build. Um, we found that looking at the content that already exists, 
um, it's definitely teaching computer science um, from a very like uh, academic lens, essentially. You know, um, there are plenty of courses from uh, established universities. MIT is one example, right? Stanford is another, uh, and those are good courses, but they're not the best introduction to CompSci, in our opinion, especially for the personality and the goals of a bootcamp graduate. And then how are you actually teaching this CS curriculum? Are you kind of doing lectures? Or are you kind of doing projects that demonstrate a particular aspect, that kind of thing? Yeah, um, so it's a combination of every, everything that we're covering, even though it's abstract computer science concepts, we're doing our best to make them applicable to real world things. Um, we're staying away from lectures specifically in this week. Um, the hope is that students, and the goal is that students will um, sort of consume this content both in video and written and project format uh, from really anywhere that they want. Um, they're welcome to come into the space um, during that time, but they're also allowed to be a little bit, take care of their lives a little bit. You know, a 10-week uh, a boot camp is quite a long time. And one of the other feedbacks that we get is like, I would like some time to be able to get my life in order at some point. Um, and there are some existing boot camps that we've seen that offer a break week in the middle, but we didn't want to just give a undirected break week. And so it was a great two birds with one stone to be able to give them a little bit of that freedom to go take care of certain personal responsibilities or family responsibilities that they have while also being able to learn. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, they're not, they don't, they're not required to be in the space. The content is written in a way that they should not require too much assistance from existing mentors that they would have here in the classroom. Um, but if, if that need arises, they'll have the ability to contact us via Slack uh, or come into the space as well. Cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, so everything when it comes to our curriculum is um, a combination of the content as well as the software that we've built, our, our graduates have built. Uh, we have this uh, learning management system, LMS, uh, that's called Compass. You know, it's in the nautical theme of things that helps uh, our students and teachers kind of collaborate in one system. I mean, LMSs are no new concept in the education space, but we've built one specifically for our needs. So all of the exercises, and you're right that it's exercises, are within Compass, which means that you know everything from getting data on how they're doing, uh, how the students are doing, are they progressing? You know, even if they're not in the space, are they getting the work done? Um, uh, is is a question that we want answered. And how are they get? How well are they understanding it? So things like quizzes after doing a reading are part of our experience in boot camp already and so it will continue within this week as well um, and then yes the projects they actually have to make certain automated tests pass and things of that nature to actually consider it uh, something that's in, and that's all built within our our software as well so yeah awesome. um and then i mean I, we probably have already touched on this a little bit as well but i'm interested in how this um computer science knowledge will make Lighthouse Labs grads actually stand out amongst other junior developers who are, who are applying for the same jobs? Like, will they be able to get kind of more interesting or different jobs than, than previously as well? You know, I, I always talked about and still talk about how I did a computer science degree and I use maybe 20% of the things that I learned, you know, and the other 80%, much of it I've forgotten and would have a tough time recalling. But when it comes time to speaking about it, and having a conversation, I can recall it will just take me time, right? But the thing I want to speak to is that knowledge, even though you know one could argue, well, that was perhaps a waste uh, if you're not applying it to your job or your career, the reality is that it's not as black and white as that because the knowledge, the deep understanding of what you're doing without even having to use those skills directly uh, gives you a certain level of confidence. Mm -hmm. uh, confidence, I mean, as humans, you know, we can pick up on those kind of cues when we're speaking with others, right? Whether it's in an interview setting or on the job. Um, so I think the confidence alone is a is a good enough value for those thirty hours, if nothing else, right? Um, I, and to answer your question more directly around, will they be more, um, you know, will they be better at their jobs in the first, let's say, in the first three months of their jobs because they have the computer science concept? I don't think that that will be. Uh, necessarily, that's not our biggest goal. Uh, as I mentioned in the three, that's one of the three goals that we have. Um, but I don't expect that it will be extremely drastic because ultimately it is 30 hours of content, right? Um, 
And there's only so much that you can learn that's applicable within 30 hours of content, especially if it's computer science. You know, we tell our students uh, that boot camp is a at least one year, aka 12 month journey to being a junior developer. And we're really the first two months of that journey. So our goal in boot camp is to really introduce them to everything that they don't know, get them comfortable in you know, most of it, and feel confident that they can continue to learn. Right? It's about learning to learn, and it's about knowing what to learn. Yeah, that's, that's a really interesting answer. I think that's really interesting what you were saying about, about your own CS degree, that you only really mo mainly use 20% of it, and 80% is the kind of stuff you occasionally get asked, which is mm -hmm. that's really interesting. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, we, were, we wanted to talk about you know, important takeaways from a boot camp. And I was wondering, you know, are these CS fundamentals you know, how do they rank in terms of important takeaways a student should have from boot camp? And what other important takeaways do you think students should strive for? Yeah, absolutely. Um, in my opinion, the computer science content is important and something they should continue to learn thereafter, but it, it definitely doesn't rank in the highest when it comes to what I, what I you know, um, su what I suggest students focus on. Um, one of the big things that I feel that our students learn here and really push them to learn here is process. Um, if you really master uh, the process of learning a new language or a framework, that's like if there was only one thing you could learn from bootcamp. If you can learn that, um, you're you're set because the chances are that you will end up working right after bootcamp with a language or framework or pattern or architecture that you are you have not learned in boot camps. So, you know, yes, boot camps are very much focused on what you do on the job um, with relevant languages like JavaScript and you know Ruby and Rails and all and Node and, and these technologies. Uh, but at the same time, uh, it's the focus is very much on the how a developer goes from having, let's say, an idea all the way to working code. And what does the process look like for a senior developer so that as a junior, you can actually hone that skill specifically? Once you master that, you've essentially, you know, in my mind, gone beyond that of a junior developer. So that's really one of the focuses that I have. One of the others that I actually emphasize quite a bit, and I did in my talk that I had with the alumni this weekend at the unconference that we had uh, at our space um, on Saturday, is that uh, it's really important to also under to be humble, uh, and I really focus on the idea of the humble developer. And um, this has many different subtopics, but um, you know, I, I'm a firm believer that uh, learning is a very humbling experience, right? And if you're not humble, then you've essentially stopped or stagnated your learning. Um, so really. The more we can throw at them, the more humbling that we hope the experience is and what they also don't know and what all the work that they still have to do uh, in order to get to their eventual goals. Um, yeah, do you, think, do you think it's part of a boot camp's responsibility to um, provide students with that CS knowledge? Like, is it, how important is it? Like, do you think all boot camps should be doing it? Um, so I think just like, university degrees, whether they're four years or five years, ought to focus on real world and you know current industry technologies, but they are not going to focus on them. Um, I think similarly, boot camps ought to focus on those technologies and do, uh, but should also incorporate the theory, let's call it an 80-20 rule, right? The universal rule of life, <laughs> perhaps, uh, where we are focused more on 80% of applicable real world uh, technologies that you will need to know about on the job and how to use them and how to learn them, but also 20% on the theory so that they actually appreciate, again, it's the humbling experience to be able to appreciate what they don't get from missing out on a computer science degree. So that's my philosophy on that. I feel that there's a symbiotic relationship between uh, computer science programs and boot camp programs, and not one or the other is really better for someone, it really depends on your goals. And in an ideal case, you do both at some point in your career. That's, I think that's really good like balance advice, I like yeah. that.
yeah, we've been, you know, interested to to kind of watch what's been happening with with boot camps this year. You know, two major boot camps here in the U.S. have announced that they're going to be closing down, and I'm wondering what you think about how how boot camps, you know, existing boot camps can make sure that they still stay competitive and in the market, um, you know, to, to stay relevant through 2018. And I'm wondering if this, like, your decision to add the CS curriculum could also be something to do with that, you know, staying relevant and staying competitive in this environment. Uh, I, absolutely. Um, you know, that's been the theme of this conversation is that just like student, our grads, uh, our programs have to also evolve with time. Um, so I think, you know, um, with Lighthouse, that's the thing that we focus on the most is we have conversations within our curriculum team, but also within our general organization, Every, the CEO all the way down talks about uh, how we can better deliver education, right? Not just curriculum, but also education delivery. Are there better ways we could even be delivering the content that we currently have? Um, I think all of those are important topics to, to, to consider. Um, and the bootcamp space, you know, has grown significantly, uh, but still remains generally small compared to other industries. Um, and so, you know, we've actually had conversations um, with boot camps that have been in that situation, and those ones in, in particular. And so we kind of know, you know, and we kind of look at ourselves as well as are we making the quote unquote mistakes that were made there? Um, and we're very aware of, of those kind of challenges. Um, well, this is my last question now. I was wondering, um, what is your advice for people who want to start learning about CS fundamentals on their own, like before or after boot camp? Like, do you think people can kind of teach themselves these things? And do you have any kind of uh, rec like resource suggestions? Uh, yeah. So when it comes to learning computer science content on your own, it's probably one of the more difficult things to learn on your own. Any theory, um, as much as there is content online, it's harder to learn on your own because of the abstract nature of it. As I mentioned, a lot of the content that does exist both in books and in the content that we found was very much focused on math and computational theory and not as much on, well, why am I learning this and where is this applied? Um, and so that's one of the reasons why we had to create a lot of that content ourselves. Um, I guess my suggestion to people who are looking to get into Programming is to learn to code first uh, and to quickly find a project where they can actually feel empowered and excited about applying those skills. And then, which is, you know, let's call that our first five weeks, which is why we don't start with computer science. And then as they evolve, start dabbling in computer science um, in some of the topics that are more applicable. So they'll encounter some computer science concepts. It's unavoidable as they go through. For example, they may encounter something like recursion or functional programming. OK, well, I'm not going to worry about it too much, but I'm going to write it down as something that I may want to research later. How do databases work? I'm using them. I'm writing SQL. But how do they fundamentally store data? That could be a question that somebody in their learning journey could be asking. That's really helpful, yeah. Cool, all right, yeah, that's all of my questions now. So yeah. Thank you so much, Imogen. Oh. I know we've been a little bit over time. I apologize. And uh, have a great week. No worries. Thank you very much to you as well. I really appreciate you taking the time. Okay. Okay, thanks. Bye. So thanks so much everyone for watching and you will be able to find a transcript of this Q&A on the Course Report blog.